Today we're going to talk about intensity transformations of images. We're going to see that this involves point transformations uh, as opposed to spatial neighborhood transformations. So in general we want to map an input value R to an output value S in an image. So here are two examples um, contrast stretching, contrast stretching, which case we have a input scale from zero to some maximum along this R scale, dark to light, and we want to map that to some output range uh, S. So this shows that uh, low values of R are mapped to zero of S, high values of R are mapped to the maximum value here. So the, this narrow range right here is mapped to the entire range of, of S here. So this essentially stretches the contrast in this range right here. In the extreme, we have a step edge like this, in which case the values of R are mapped to either 0 or 1 or the maximum. So that essentially does a thresholding. Most imaging editing software, such as uh, Photoshop, allows you to do transformations like this where you can sketch the arbitrary curve that you want to use for your uh, transformation. An example of a gray level transformation is the uh, gamma transform family where the transform is this equation s equals c r to the gamma. So here we assume that um, uh, well, gamma, for example, if a 1 is no transform, gamma values that are greater than 1, for example, 2, represent a square function. Gamma values that are less than 1, for example, 0.5, would represent a like a square root function. So um, gram values greater than 1 would enhance the high values of R at the expense of low values. Gamma values less than 1 would emphasize the low values, uh, stretch those at the expense of the high values. An example, let me just uh, pull up some MATLAB images here. Um, grab this. Um, well, a simple one would be a image negation. So here is um, my input image and my output image. My negated image would simply be 255 minus that. So that would be a, a gamut, or a, not sorry, a intensity transform that would have a negative slope, for example. Um, let's look at a gamma transform. Um, I'll bring up this image. I'm going to work with um, double and scale everything to 0 to 1 and then raise it to the power gamma. So for this image, I should display the image first. This particular image is um, rather dark. Perhaps we might want to enhance the uh, values at this at this low range here. So I'll raise it to a power of gamma less than one. That should enhance the low values at the expense of the high values. So as you can see. Now we can see a lot more detail um, in this area that used to be uh, fairly dark. Okay, going the other extreme, uh, let's take this image. Okay, so this image is um, kind of washed out the as the high values are bunched up, we want to spread those out. So we'll enhance it with, first we'll do the double again, the conversion to a double. 
and now we'll enhance it with a value of gamma greater than 1 such as uh, 4.0. So now we can see a lot more detail in the areas that previously had seemed uh, too bright. So for example, all of this here. Okay, so now I'd like to talk a little bit about probability in preparation for the next topic, which is histogram equalization. So probability recall is um, <clears throat> empirically we can describe it as the number of outcomes of an event of a certain type. For example, heads if we flip a coin n times. So the probability as we do enough experiments approaches number of heads divided by the total number of trials. Of course, the probability is between 0 and 1. The probabilities of all possible outcomes sum to 1. Another concept is the concept of a random variable, which is the value that um, the outcome uh, that you get as a result of performing an experiment. So for example, a random variable x to represent a coin toss, we could assign a 0 for heads and a 1 for tails and assign probabilities to those particular values. Another concept, of course, is the idea of a mean or expected value of a random variable. We can compute that by summing up all the outcomes and dividing by n. Or if we, we can express it another way, if we know the values that can be taken on and we know the probability of each value, we can compute the mean this way um, it's the summing over all the possible values of the probability of that value times the value. Similarly, we've got the idea of variance, which is the expected value of the values minus the mean squared. And similarly to the, to the last slide, we can express that in terms of summing over the possible values um, of the probability of having that value times r minus u squared. Sometimes, especially in image computations, um, it's easier to compute the variance um, using this expression, which you can easily see here. It's the expected value of x squared minus the mean squared. The idea of continuous random variables are um, variables that can take on continuous values. In this case, we can't talk about the probability of having a specific value, but we can give the probability of a range. So for example, uh, between 0.1 and 0.2. We can also express the cumulative probability distribution function as the probability that our random variable x takes on any value from minus infinity up to some value a. So that would be our CDF um, of a. And then the probability density function, or PDF, is the derivative of that with respect to x. So the probability that x is between some a and some b is f of b minus f of a. Or we could integrate the PDF from a to b. OK, so those concepts we're going to need um, in talking about histograms. So a histogram of an image is the count of the number of pixels with each gray level. If we divide by the total number of pixels n, then we can get an approximation of the PDF or probability density function. Here's an example of the histogram of an image that's very dark. You can see the counts for low values of R are high, but we have basically zero counts everywhere else in the image.